In today's video, we'll present you our new LA Recorder software and explore it more in detail. As already mentioned in our previous quick intro video, which you can find in the detail card, LA Recorder is available for both Windows 10, 60-bit version or newer, as well as Mac OS 13 Ventura or newer. So what is needed to operate LA Recorder? Besides a suitable PC or Mac, you will also need an AVB capable Ethernet interfaces such as our USB to AVB interface. For Mac user, a Mac native uh, Ethernet port, for example on the Mac Mini, or the Sonnet AVB interfaces for usage with MacBooks or Mac Mini would be needed. Once this interface has been correctly installed, it will show up as an output interface through the Azure Multiface USB. On Mac, very important, it will only show up as input interface once connected to the software. What is LA Recorder? LA Recorder is a laser animation software used for recording of incoming AVB streams. Recorded files are saved as IF files onto your computer. IF stands for Audio Interchange File Format, so basically a multi-channel audio file format. These files can later be played back using our new LA Player software. For more information about that, please check our dedicated video about LA Player on YouTube. Our LA Recorder can also, whenever you have a compliant laser projector from Laser Animation, which can be a Phenom or a Pico with Phenom mainboard, directly upload recorded file onto the projector's internal memory. This of course can also be made manually, but we will later discuss this. How to operate LA Recorder. First of all, make sure that your AVB capable Ethernet interface is connected, active and correctly configured. Now you can start our LA Recorder and it will show the following screen. LA Recorder is an intuitive program with a single screen, so you have all you need on that single page. On the top left of your screen you have the Azure Core Audio input. This part will let you select your input device, input source, as well as sample rate and desired stream format via the drop-down menu. Select the stream format you will record and for what device the recorded stream is intended. Select XY RGB for all RGB laser projectors such as our Phenom Accurate, Phenom XD or RTI Pico and RTI Nano units equipped with our Phenon XD mainboard. Select XY RGB Y for all laser projectors equipped with an additional yellow OPSL laser source, such as our Phenon XD 30000 or our Pico or YGB devices. Also make sure that you are using the proper ILDA to AVB firmware that provides the respective channels. That can be changed via Toolbox Update Manager if needed. In the case you select XY RGB but are recording an external analog ILDA stream with RYGB, it is unfortunate that the information for yellow will be lost, as you will only record XY, the scanner positions, as well as RGB for the color values. The stream index will be the starting number of your streams, so if you select for example, LA Recorder, we only show stream AVB streams above 2. The stream count will be the number of streams you want to record at the same time. Once you've made those changes or setups, then click on Connect. If everything has been set correctly, you should get the screen below here that LA Recorder is correctly connected. In this example below you can see the stream index being 1 and the stream count being 2, which makes LA Recorder to display stream 1 and 2. You can also change that to something else. Now that the input source has been selected, we have to specify an IF5 output within the top right field we have here. Click on Browse to select the destination fold and the name of your recorded IF file. You can also use the hashtag in the file name to create a file for each stream, as shown in the example. Well, in this example not, but you can you could also use a hash 
um, to use have one specific name per stream. You can also add author information as well as copyright information in those fields. Before clicking record, you may want also to assign sync the timecode data information to your recorded file. This can be made on the bottom left portion called timecode. An important information up front. The timecode source is selected here by clicking either on internal, net timecode or LTC. The start stop timecodes are used to set the recording range. You can find them here on the left as well as there. Whenever recording with timecode, you should always record with an idle time of, for example, 5 seconds before the actual start of the show. The time script must then be started earlier with the same delay, as otherwise parts of the first second of the show could be missed. In this case, it's also a good idea not to set the start of the timeline to 000, but for example to 1 hour, so that there are possible cue points before the recording. With internal timecode, a LA recorder will generate a timecode signal, which then can be output as net timecode if you check the box over here. In this example, once I press record, the timecode will start at 5 minutes and the recording will have this information as well. Recording will automatically be stopped once timecode has reached 10 minutes. Well, here, internal. Yeah. As you can see here, the timecodes just started at 5 minutes and will last until it arrives or reaches 10 minutes. This can be very useful if you want to make sure that you only record the part you want without any blanks. Next to internal timeline, you can also select our net timecode, which is an UDP broadcast based timecode. Once detected in the network, the source will show the net timecode adapter. In our case here, I don't have any one, so it, it's left blank. In case you want to generate net timecode, here's my pro tip. You can select our LA player and select timecode source internal timeline over here and check the send net timecode box and simply click on play. By doing so, LA player will generate an internal timecode and will send that timecode as net timecode in your network. When I get back to LA player, I see here that I do have a net timecode and the source being here the IP address of my computer. This timecode can then be used as trigger timecode for an external DSP or lighting desk or any other equipment. There are numerous other possible sources for net timecodes, such as our LaserGraph DSP, Showline, LPD player or LPD recorder. If you have an external SMPT timecode, you can also convert it to a net timecode using a special SMPT to net timecode adapter from Laser Animation. If you want to record using a net timecode as trigger signal, simply select net timecode, press record, and you will see that it shows wait or waiting for timecode. As soon as I will play or press play on LA player, it will start recording as it receives a valid net timecode. Once selected, you will see that LA Recorder is waiting for timecode to record. Here, on the left and the right, you can as well adjust start and stop values of the timecode. And finally, you can also have a sound interface as a receiver from an external LTC and SMPT. Again, if you want to make sure or if you want to use the LTC, make sure to select it on the bottom um, drop down menu, and here you know. Now you see it will wait for an external LTC. Here I don't have any devices connected, but otherwise as soon as you have a valid interface connected to your network or computer, it will appear in this box. As mentioned before, 
LA Recorder will record incoming ADB streams and save them as IVE file, either on your computer or directly onto a target host laser projector. To do so, click on Edit and enter the IP address of your host. In our case, it would be a laser projector, could also be an AVB to ILDA interface, who should receive the recorded file. Important, the unit must be connected to the network and also be powered up. Further options are available, such as how to map files to host. One can upload each file to each host, for example for recorded test patterns, or each file to a different host, for example for the recorded stream of a show. All our Fanon Accurate, Fanon XD, as well as RTI Pico or RTI Nano units equipped with the new Fanon mainboard can receive a valid net timecode and trigger playback of stored files accordingly. If you need extra entries to the time script, for example to show a test pattern, we can always edit the generated time script by clicking on Edit Template. Otherwise, the time script will be generated automatically to play the recorded file within your configured start-stop timecodes. Once you're done with the recording or the modification of your time script, you can either upload all to the host projector by clicking Upload Now here, or if you just made some changes to the time script, you can select the small box on the right side and only upload the time script. And finally, the visualization part on the right bottom part. If you want, you can check the corresponding box and the recorded stream will also be redirected or made available for different visualization software, such as our LA Preview, which is part of LA Tools, or as you see here, Capture, Depends, to WYSIWYG or Light Converse. The projector offset you see here. The projector offset is useful if you have different projectors in your preview and don't want them all to display as being projector 1. So it forces a projector number different than 1. And we've come to a close to today's LA Recorder Explained in Detail tutorial. Do not miss our next tutorials and please watch our existing LA Toolbox and LA Tools videos.